we don't need faces anymore. Have you seen what they've done to our faces? Today? Have you seen what they've done to our poets? Today? Let's start with a poem of this old ass device. Um, the kind you sign up for in the street. It's uh, very much like the devices that the poets we love all over the world and in America, the poets who don't get published and don't get this mic, they be on these kinds of devices. Flip phones and such. Rifat al-Larir was murdered early in this slaughter and his last interview was available for you online. Rifat said in his last interview, what, when they come into my house, I am a writer. What will I do, throw my marker at them? I will throw my marker at them. They bombed his house uh, not long after and Rifat, a poet, was one of the first people to publicly um, talk about October 7th. So, poets, to call yourself a poet. And Rifat wrote this not during this genocide that took him and months later his daughter and her newborn baby son. He wrote this years ago. And I think he was talking to us. If I must die, you must live to tell my story, to sell my things, to buy a piece of cloth and some strings, make it white with a long tail, so that a child somewhere in Gaza, while looking heaven in the eye, awaiting his dad, who left in a blaze and bid no one farewell, not even his flesh, not even to himself. Seize the kite. My kite, you made, flying up above and thinks for a moment of an angel. An angel is there, bringing back love. If I must die, let her bring hope. Let it be a tale. And he did die. The Palestinians, along with many peoples on this planet, we have a, a, a culture where martyrdom is not foreign to us. Sacrifice to, for our community is not foreign, nor is it a neurosis to us. Um, so glory to the martyrs. This poem specifically I wrote after I visited St. Louis, the street where they left young Michael Brown's body for hours. Do you remember those summers? Y'all were so young. Your parents were like protecting you from shit, trying to. But my question at the time to your generation, I don't really, yeah, is uh, how it feel to be hashed and tagged. How it feel to be hashed and tagged, to be favorited and followed. How it feels to be flash, melting in potted plants, to have your needs bit into sounds, mainstreamed. How you scream into cameras, be captured into shock, stock photos of your only grief. How does damage feel denied, and you the one gotta repair. How your story dirty laundry, the irony, the stark of it. How you history reborn, what about this burning pedestal, the fans of your misery, holy wounds with salt, where your aches delayed, how you an animal hunted, why you gotta be perfect to live, when do you rest, recognize how you the compass and the sharp edge, where do you cipher, who forgot you, when do you rest, you the line, you the line, front and fired, where you draw the line, this knife. Okay, I wanna, thank you. You don't have to, we're like so short on time and I wanna make sure that 
everybody gets a, a chance to be on the stage. I want to read you some primary material. Uh, New Orleans, one year after Katrina, I went, poet, went uh, two weeks after Katrina hit and met with people and did the work and it went a year later. This is from a year later. Let's see if you hear echoes. Miss Stephanie says she never thought herself a leader. Four kids, one grandbaby, two jobs, three gold teeth. My oldest boy's been to college, one for three years, another for two. My daughter, she gonna go after school. The youngest will go too. Sitting in the blazing sun outside of the St. Bernard housing development, Stephanie, Stephanie and Lynette are sitting on lawn chairs across from their project homes. Both women came back to New Orleans from Houston in March. So it's like about half a year later. Another friend came back 10 days ago from Atlanta. There's some $20,000 fence around their projects to keep the residents out though. 1,400 units a year later. They say there is no damage in their homes from Katrina. The damage has been caused by the neglect and the forced exile of the residents who, kept, who took care of it. The floors and walls in these projects are concrete. In New Orleans, you can't even nail nothing up on the wall, Stephanie says. Concrete, all it needs is some bleach and water to clean it, but they won't let us clean it. There's about 8,000 low-income housing units that are sealed off from their tenants. Families are still separated and dispersed throughout the states. This is home to me, though. People don't think we're human beings. They look at us as the lowest of the lowest. They never talk about the good things, the family activities we have. My first responders were the so-called thugs and criminals. They came and got the old folks. Women put their drawers, I saw that in Baton Rouge too and they was the pimps. Women put their children in drawers on refrigerator doors, anything to keep them from getting into water. Miss Stephanie says she misses cooking for the old folks, misses walking down her street. I could have always left here. But it's my choice to be here with my people. We live fine, we work hard, and we pay rent. I tell her I'll be back in a year for some food. Um, I'm gonna read one more poem so that I want, good, thank you. I had like all, I didn't know really what you needed. Because I don't need your attention. Ever again. Sure. Like, I actually don't want attention. So since I'm here, I really want to know what you need to get braver. My Palestinian friends say to me, pray that I am patient. They do not pray for help from you or me. They pray to endure. So I was trying to figure out like, what to give you, how to connect. Uh, I'd be around a lot of Trump people for no good reason, so I already know what's coming, I've already lived it. And because I've lived around Trumpers, I've been so isolated from all of y'all. And it's, it's already here, but we're still buffered. This is a buffering. But what we need is to get braver. It's what you call yourselves. So I'm gonna read a poem. It's what you call yourselves, right? I'm not trying to like... Um, Muhammad al-Durra, nicknamed Rami, when I was 25 years old, I um, uh, saw Muhammad al-Durra shot by Israeli tanks while his father was trying to protect him. I'm 50. His father was murdered in this genocide. How can I make this connect for you? Uh, nothing is new to this, stars. I remember now what it means to be a Palestinian. This cramped scrambling from station to station in search of better, sharper, newer footage. What is the media calling genocide this half hour? I remember what genocide is. 
If before they were shot down in the streets like wild dogs, the dead had been throwing rocks, bricks, shooting crippled ammunition, even smuggled in secondhand Israeli weaponry, it is still a massacre. What? We are only to sympathize with those who hand their murderers guns and lay down for them? What? We are to believe y'all floating in the hype hatred built? We are to understand anti-tank missiles, 500 pound bombs on tents, fired into buildings, into bodies. This image will haunt me, a child crouched and caught in crossfire, a terror through him no one living can fathom, a fear particular to the last minutes of a 12-year-old life. Rami looking for protection under his father's arm, screaming and holding his hands over his ears, arms trembling akimbo, so loud the shooting and the guns, the Hebrew, Arabic, French, English, the language of death around him. His little heart bruised his ribs, beating so hard, his feet under him, unable to run, to walk, to dig a cover to hide in, his father reduced to a human shield, begging and we watched this little boy murdered, and we heard the justifications and the dragging of feet over his blood on the ground. Even the ambulance driver who drove to reach him was shot 25 years ago. Remind me what it means to be human. When we spend money on films to scare us and sex to drive us, when we jump from amusement rides for a rush and buy glitter to camouflage, remind me what we're supposed to do to be after we witness this. Not how we get up and go to work, to school, to bed, but why and fuck an eye for an eye. The body of a 12-year-old Israeli boy will not equal one freckle on my Rami's cheek. The killings have not stopped, even as I begin to write this five days later. Five days after, a French television focused a lens on a father and a son backed up into a wall. Who knew they would capture forever on film what it means to be a species bent on self-destruction, the killing off of our young. I remember Palestine and Sierra Leone, Bosnia, Rwanda, America South, Algeria, Trail of Tears. I remember Auschwitz, the Congo, Lebanon, Cambodia. The name of nations have never been beautiful enough for poems. The names of martyrs have have always been too numerous for poems. Remind me who God is, who God is supposed to be, and why I'm supposed to believe in anything other than war. From now on, dead children are my God. I will pray to them and petition them for forgiveness and declare crusades in their names. I remember what it feels to be 12 and unable to run from men's aggressions, but I am here are here and we are altered. What it means to be alive might have shifted. The paradigm, you want it to be the same? Sparing a dime? You want to shed a tear? I will remember Rami, but not the way his siblings will. Not the way his father will once he regains consciousness. Not the way his mother will or the boys who will come after him, hungry and fed on vengeance. I will remember him when I pray. It will be in his name. I will remember him when I look at you because God is in everyone. I will remember him when I go to work, to school, because God is in the daily. When I write, because God is in the details. I will remember this little boy murdered in Palestine by those who do not believe in God. God, the story on repeat, 2,000 what years after a carpenter was crucified for his magic. I will remember him when I cry because these tears are not enough. When I have a choice between fear and strength, which is love, and God is love, I will choose God. I remember the last minute of Rami's life when he was cramped, scrambling from one face to another, searching for mercy. Get brave. Get brave. Get brave. You're going to have to defend yourselves and what matters to you. 
Thank you.